I ran Jeeps my whole Justin career. So okay. it's, it's a, so I'll take a four door Jeep. I put a safari rack on it, like, the, uh -huh. and then I put my ladders on top of it. And people, they kind of look at it first and like, man, I've never thought about. It. Now there's a local roofing contractor. They got rid of all their trucks, and now they have four door Jeeps. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They don't get the best fuel mileage, but you know, being in the Midwest, I work on farms. I'm working downtown, yeah. you know, Chicago, Indianapolis. You know, I got to be able yeah. to park. You know, it's not good for fuel mileage, obviously, but it serves Small my footprint. purpose. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I've always <laughs> been a Jeep guy, so. What do you think? Like, are the the, the biggest benefits to to driving a Jeep versus like a I don't know, like a minivan or just a, a regular old SUV? Um, you know, I've been on some – I've worked in the northeast in the dead of winter. You're not going to be driving around, you know, climbing up snow-covered hills like and, and roads that, you know, have snow. I mean to me it's the four-wheel drive. I mean yeah. not everywhere in the country you need four-wheel drive. But if someone says, hey, we go to Colorado and we got 20 claims up in the mountains, well, a van, even if it's all-wheel drive – a van, from a ground clearance standpoint, is not going yeah. to be able to get up there. So I look at it as, you know, I can go. I've worked on plenty of farms, you know, and you pull up in the farm and it's rutted mutts from the combines, or or the farmers like, hey, can you come meet me, you know, back of this field or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah, so from sure. that standpoint, I look at it as, you know, I I want a jeep, you know, I, yeah. you know, it's just, again. The thing that it lacks is fuel mileage, but that's – you're not going to have a perfect car, I don't think, you know, for – I mean it's really no. got to suit your needs. And I just look at it as the way I get my ladders. I even carry a 32-foot ladder because I am two-story steep certified. So you know, a lot of people don't carry a big ladder like that. So with this – with the safari rack, it holds those racks or those ladders you know, really well. So yeah. – and it's compact. I can I can get it in a parking garage if I have to, you know, do some claims downtown, or or I can park it in a compact parking spot. And I've had to do that when you know some streets in downtown Indy are one way. So then you got to yeah. try to, you know, I'm not going to park a a big Chevy 2500 or you know something like that in there. Um, no. So just it oh, just no. suffices my needs and and my and it's my personality. And now the the other downside is. It's very distinct when you pull up to a to a claim and the, and you've worked with the contractor for five or ten or fifteen claims and they're like oh you know they can see it coming down the road they know who it is you know right so right, right. That, that's a, that's always you kind of a, a bunch joke. Of roofs. yeah you know so <laughs> not I mean you know so that's always been kind of a joke so oh yeah we know who it is like does he have a yeah. black jeep or whatever the case may be so yeah yeah um all right yeah so that's pretty cool that's 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 one of the reasons why I like that that Forerunner so much was that it had a yeah. it had a super tight turning radius, so I could pretty much turn around like I'm just like a residential street, with, with without it doing like a 17 point turn. Right. And it's all four wheel drive, and it's got some ground clearance. Right. I I, I didn't use the four wheel drive a lot, but when in, when I needed it, it was like there it is, you know. Um, yeah. You know, you, and like you said, going out on like the, the back 40 or doing farm and ranch claims in particular, like you got to go look at these buildings. And do you want to hump your 32 foot ladder over all the way to that grain bin that's 600 yards over there or just right. j drive over there, right? Across the pasture. Um, so, so far in your career, what would you say has been your most challenging claim that you've done? Most challenging claim oh, is is either a, a freeze claim or a fire. I mean those yeah. um, because different carriers have different guidelines, and so you have to kind of build all this data before you even get to the claim, before you even yeah. get to, to actually do the inspection, whether it's a freeze claim. Say a freeze claim up in the northeast. Well, you got to have all this, you know, data and info before you even go to the inspection. Let alone, it may be a second home, and then now, you know, they live down in Connecticut, but they're driving up to Vermont, you know, and they're like, "Hey, we don't know if the the, the driveway's plowed or not. It could have four sure. feet of snow." So there's all these things that's building up to it, and then 
you know, with a lot of those freeze claims or fire claims, then you're really – you have to dive so deep into that policy, yeah. you know, um, and then all the endorsements because the endorsements get a little – they're a little different up in the northeast, um, you know, for some type of mitigation, whether they're cleaning off snow removal off the roofs, you know, things of that. Like, So you really have to dive in, you know, and get all this – leg work done before you even get to the inspection those can be really challenging and sometimes they're not um they're not close i mean you're you're driving an hour and a half just from a centralized location from a hotel you know hour and a half to two hours even sometimes three hours one way and then you get there and oh this is my second home we forgot we're not going to be there like and that's even like sending out the pretext, the pre emails, like whatever the case may be. So those get real challenging, you know, and then the biggest thing is like the homeowners don't know what their policy is and what it says, you know. So you're trying to, you know, show compassion and empathy and really explaining their policy, if there's endorsements, what's covered, what's not. And you know, so those right. those tend to me got you know, th- those get you know, those can be real challenging and stuff. Sure. Occupation. Yeah. Yeah. As an adjuster, you need to know more than just how to read an HO3 policy and how to sketch a three-level house in Xactimate. You also need to know how to tell hail damage from wear and tear on composition shingles. The number one resource for damage identification books, trainings, and certifications is Hague Education. Not only that, but they provide building inspection and desk adjuster trainings and certifications as well. These are the guys who make the classic Hague Damage ID books that I used for years to educate myself, my insureds, and quite a few roof sales guys on what is damage that we can pay for and everything else. Looking at you, bird poop. Get a discount on all books, tools, certifications, and other trainings with the code Adjuster TV at checkout at HagueEducation.com. You know it's boring insurance policies. You know what's not boring? More Adjuster TV vids right here.